Are you paying $140 for a Windows? What if I told you there are smarter ways to get it without breaking the bank? Or the rules? Today I'll show you all the options from completely free setups to budget-friendly alternatives that even Microsoft might secretly approve of. Whether you're building your first PC, upgrading an old one, or just curious about the quirks of licensing, this video is for you. From legit options to clever workarounds, let's explore every route to running Windows 11 without spending more than you need. First First up, let's look on the official way how to get a Windows and why it's often the priciest option. So, the official route, paying the premium. If you go straight to the Microsoft website, you'll see Windows 11 priced at a jaw-dropping $140. Actually, it's $139. That's for a digital download, no fancy box, no USB stick, just a license key and the privilege of handing over your money. Interestingly, you don't even need to enter the key during the installation. You can install and run Windows without activating it, but more on that later. Oh yeah, and if you're into retro tech, the retail version still comes with a DVD because clearly we're all booting our modern PCs from optical drives in 2024, right? So the second option is the cheaper but official system builder licenses. For builders and small scale integrators, there's the OEM license, there's a sold in, bu in bulk to companies building PCs for resale, but you can often grab one online for as low as $120. The catch? It's tied to the first PC you install it. Forever. Still, if you're building a budget rig or just refurbishing an older machine, this can save you some serious cash compared to the retail price. They even include a coaster or, wait, uh, that's supposed to be the DVD, useful if you're thirsty while waiting for your operating system to install. The surprisingly free option. Now, here's the trick that many of you might not know. You can install the Windows 11 completely free, no hacks, no piracy, Microsoft lets you download the install media directly from their site and run the operating system without activating it. The only catches a watermark in the corner of your screen, limited personalization options and some reports of minor performance quirks, especially with gaming features like variable refresh rates. But for everyday use, it's fully functional. Perfect if you're just testing a new build or running a secondary system. Last but not least, the wild west of Windows, a look at the pirate and full disclosure, like I do not recommend to do that, it's not allowed, it's a bad thing to do, but back in the days, before free alternatives or discounted keys were widespread, pirating Windows was shockingly common. Many of us remember finding cracked versions of Windows XP or Windows 7 online, complete with key generators and activation bypass tools. These methods often involve downloading ISO files from sketchy websites or running questionable software to force activation. The risks? malware, system instability, and even breaking your PC. Despite the risks, privacy thrived because of the high cost of retail licenses. For many users, especially in countries where $140 represented a significant portion of their income, pirating Windows felt like the only option. And around 20 years ago, I believe most of us had some friend or friend of our friends who had this pirated copy of Windows XP or even Windows 98 or Windows 95 to whom you try to find him or just call him whenever you decided that it's time to reinstall your operating system. And it's interesting, the Microsoft seemed to turn a blind eye for a long time. Why? Well, they wanted Windows to remain the dominant operating system. Even pirated versions meant more users in their ecosystem, indirectly boosting software sales and market share. Today, the piracy has become less common thanks to affordable alternatives and free activation options. But those who've been in the PC community long enough likely remember those wild days of sketchy down downloads and cracked serial keys. So the next one, the gray market, discount keys everywhere. Next there's a wild west of third party key sellers, websites like G2A or All Key Shop. You'll see Windows keys priced anywhere from $10 to $30, but here's the catch. The origins of these keys can be murky. Some might come from the regions with different licensing agreements, while others could be tied to corporate or educational programs. 
And while many keys activate without issue, you're taking a gamble. If you're comfortable with the risks, this can be an ultra cheap way to get a valid license, but honestly, it's not my favorite option. And I must mention that Linux and Beyond is a great alternative for all of this. If you're tied to spending money on operating systems, why not skip Windows entirely? Linux has came up a long way with user-friendly distributions like Ubuntu and Pop OS, offering a polished desktop experience completely for free. Plus, with a Valve Steam OS making waves in the gaming world, the idea of Linux-based gaming PC isn't as far-fetched as it once was. It's not for everyone, but it's worth a look if you're feeling adventurous. Which brings us to the conclusion. So, there you have it. The complete rundown of ways to get Windows 11, legit, budget-friendly, and even free. Whether you're sticking with the official routes or exploring alternatives like Linux, there's something here for every budget and use case. Which options would you choose? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this guide helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell for more tips and tricks to maximize your PC experience. Next time we'll dive into the whether budget graphics cards are worth it in 2024, so stay tuned.